Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is Alpha Helixes are compatible with and you have to choose one of these answers. Now I want you to take a look at this picture of the molecule. So this is alanine, he is central alpha carbon and he is a methyl group which is R group and he is a carboxylic group, amino group and another carboxylic group here which makes a peptide bond with this alanine. So this group doesn't belong to the alanine and this amino group which makes another peptide bond with this carboxylic group also doesn't belong to the alanine. So basically we see here alanine and two adjustant group of two adjustant amino acids. Now let me show you peptide bonds. It is here with pink color, two peptide bonds. As you see, peptide bonds are partially double bond, so we don't have rotation here nor here. And actually, we also don't have rotation around this peptide bond. So peptide bonds doesn't rotate and all this group of atoms are in the same plane. And if they are going to rotate, they are going to rotate together and they can rotate only around this torsion angles. And we call phi torsional angle between central alpha carbon and amino group and psi torsional angle between central alpha carbon and carboxylic group. Now let me show you two planes which as I said this group of atoms make and which are going to rotate simultaneously. When you look at this amino acid when it is represented by ball and stick model it looks like these planes can rotate freely but this is not quite so. Take a look for example on other model which includes Van der Waals interactions and now you see how this molecule uh, looks like and now let's try to rotate this phi and psi planes. For example, let's start with phi. You see how it rotates and when it rotates it can get into clashes. So let me show it also here. So you see it cannot rotate freely. It's just like uh, compressed to balls against each other. So now you see that this plane actually can take such position when it doesn't have any interference, when uh, atoms of one plane doesn't have interference with the rest of the molecule. This is true for phi angle. This is also true for psi angle. Take a look. Now I'm rotating another angle and it also has clashes as you see and when it doesn't have that means that it is energetically favorable position and there are not so many also positions that uh, this angle can take. Now I want you to pay attention to this Ramachandran plot which represent all possible angles that phi and psi angles can take. Of course each plane can rotate 360 degrees, 360 degrees here for phi and psi angles but we say that they can rotate 180 with negative sign and positive sign, negative sign and positive sign. So we have here four quadrants. Because phi and psi planes can have a clash we do not see on our scatter plot positions in many areas. It would be possible if our planes would be able to rotate freely. Then we would see uh, variants here also. But positions are limited. And now I want you to pay attention to this picture. I represent one of these uh, planes and angles with different types of the switches. This is fine turning and now you know it doesn't work for uh, molecules in the protein but this one variant is better representation when phi and psi 
angle positions are restricted and limited and only can take certain positions within a molecule. When we know combinations of such angles, we can predict that such angles can happen in certain secondary structures of the protein, for example, in right-handed alpha helix or left-handed alpha helix or right twisted beta sheets or collagen helix and so on. This is very important for computational biology, for bioinformatics in order to predict how polypeptide chain would fold. So now let's check our answers. Variant A, all possible phi psi angle combinations. This is not true. Variant B, a limited range of phi psi angle combinations. This is going to be our choice. Variant B is the correct answer. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.